What's going on, Cage Nation? Your boy Kendrick Gray, the Dreadlock Boy, here back with my Mortal Kombat Cinematic Universe pitch. And here, we're going to again jump right into Phase 5. I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. We got two more phases after this, so hopefully, you guys are really, really digging these crap, these pitch. I oh, let's take that out. Let us take that out. I don't, I don't need that to be happening. So, so far, I hope you guys have been enjoying these pitch ideas. We're going to jump right into Phase 5 with the movies. So let's just go right ahead and get it in here. Phase five, of course, starts with as another Special Forces movie. So we got Special Forces keeping the peace. And this is years after the Netherrealm invasion. Johnny and Commander Sonya Blade are head of the Outer World Investigation Agency. You probably remember that from the previous timeline. That was started like immediately after Mortal Kombat 2. Um, they're basically a strike force unit tasked with maintaining peace among their own. So basically, they send soldiers to different realms and stuff, much like how America does now. And they send them across the realms to make sure everything is being maintained. Cassie and Jackie are both lieutenants now. And here we introduce the main, the remaining Kamidogu. Lee May kind of serves as a low level enforcer to the Outer World Investigation Agency. The next movie in this is Fire and Ice, another Fire and Ice sequel, Fire and Ice Frostbite. And basically, uh, Grandmaster Sub-Zero has to deal with Frost's growing arrogance as she becomes like the top top ninja in um, the um, Lin Kuei. Uh, Raiden's corruption keeps growing and growing and growing. And then, of course, S Scorpion disappears for some unknown reason. Scorpion disappears for some reason. So... Sub-Zero has to deal with a lot as he's turned um, Lin Kuei into a force for good on Earth. The next film in this is called Takahashi. And this is where Kenshi and Takeda are hunting down and killing the remaining Red Dragon members. And is here, I mean, of course, they are responsible for the death of Su Chin, uh, Kenshi's wife, Takeda's mother. And here we're introduced to Movado. Movado is finally introduced in this movie. The next next movie in this phase is Conum of Outworld and this is where we examine Kotal Khan's um, strength and growing strength as he prepares for an invasion that may come to Ur Outworld um, he hires Kano um, after Kano um, is, seeks asylum on Earthrealm and in exchange he gives him Earthrealm, Earthrealm weapons this is what Kano does, this is what he does we are introduced to Nitara in this phase and the Dragon King Onaga is mentioned. And there's more to this. There's definitely more to this. Uh, there we go. Uh, the next movie in this is another sequel. Is White Lotus Bloodlines. Here we have Kung Jin. Who is accompanied by Bo Rai Cho. And he's sent out to find Kung Lao. Because you know after the um, incident. Well after the battle of um, Godfall. Um, somehow Kung Lao comes back to life, so to speak, in a way, kind of, but he's still kind of dead, kind of. Um, but yeah, you know, so Kung Jin and Bo Cho are out to go look for our Kung Lao. That's what happens in that movie. Um, and the next movie called Lord of Thunder. Raiden, who has continued to be corrupted, his corruption continues to grow. He travels to the other realms and declares retaliation should Earthrealm be attacked. Fujin is getting worried that. Raiden's um, increasing aggression is going to cause all-out war. And here, Raiden begins seeking out the Kami Yudogu again to fortify Earth's defense. So it's about, about to get crazy. All this culminates in the latest Mortal Kombat team of movie, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliances. Not Deadly Alliance, Deadly Alliances. Now that Raiden, and here, Raiden collects six of the seven Kami Yudogu. He launches an attack on Earthrealm. I mean, no, he launches an attack on Outworld. Um, Earth Realms, um, no, well, yeah, he launches an attack on Outworld. Kotal and his forces launch a counterattack, but they are no match for Raiders' new power. The Chosen Warriors of Earth drawn to fight to protect Outworld this time, not to fight against them. And knowing this, Raiden forges an alliance with the Netherrealm rulers. So basically, Raiden forms an alliance with Katana and Liu Kang, who are rulers of the Netherrealm. And he says, with their help, he'll exchange them for the souls of the ones that die in the battle. Kung Lao and Kung Jin join the battle 
and they fight against Liu Kang and Katana. Wu Jin fights alongside um, fights alongside Kotal Khan in order to stop Raiden. And that right there concludes Phase Five the phase five movies for the Mortal Kombat Cinematic Universe. So as you can see, things are starting to get a little bit crazy. Raiden's basically, you know, he's going after people now. Rather than just defending Earth, he's going out and attacking other people that might threaten Earth. And the forces of good have to try to try to figure out whose side they should be on or who should they be protecting. And since there was an accord between Outworld and Earth Realm, a lot of the heroes decide to help out Outworld because Raiden's just kind of going crazy. Um, is it again? It's an interesting dynamic considering again, of course, that Mortal Kombat 11 is not out for another like another couple of weeks or so. As a matter of fact, if we look at the calendar now, yeah, we're about we're about um two weeks out. We're about two weeks out from Mortal Kombat 11. So that means phase six will be next sunday and then phase Sunday sunday will be the following su phase seven will be the following sunday leading into the recent world come at 11. so it's going to be um we're, i mean we're kind of cutting it close but we're not cutting it that close we should actually be pretty much in the clear um there's a lot of characters that were introduced in mortal kombat deadly alliance and mortal kombat deception mind you that are already made an appearance in you know phase four of the Mortal Kombat um of the Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Cinematic Universe only because again Mortal Kombat X is essentially a retelling of Mortal Kombat Four and then Mortal Kombat X combo book does a lot of the um introduction of a lot of characters that existed in Mortal Kombat Four as well as Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Deception. With that being said, we're gonna go into the characters that will be again introduced into phase five of the mortal kombat cinematic universe and you saw a glimpse of him the last time but the first character that i had to recast for the more new mortal kombat cinematic universe is movado movado of course is one of the lieutenants as we find out in the game he's one of the lieutenants of the red dragon not so much the leader even though he comes off as leader in the beginning but we all know who the true leader is and we'll talk about that a little bit later on I picked Byung Hoon Lee, who's not who's pretty good at playing villains, of course. You know, playing um, Storm Shadow and GI Joe and such. So I thought this would be an interesting little role for him to um, take on in the Mortal Kombat Cinematic Universe. Nobody likes Su Hao. Even the creators of Mortal Kombat don't like Su Hao. Nobody likes him. Everybody likes Rusev though. Everybody loves Rusev. I love Rusev. So, you know, if it's a case where even if, you know, Su Hao just dies very quickly. You know, Su Hao is a Black Dragon member. If I'm not mistaken. No, I could be wrong about that. Let me just double check that. But I believe that Su Hao is a member of the Black Dragon. Let's see here. My mistake, no, Su Hao's a member of the Red Dragon. He is a member of the Red Dragon. That was my mistake. But, you know, I figure if at any point Rusev has some free time within his WWE busy schedule, he can knock a roll like this out and, you know, just have a little fun with him. Make him a comic, make him a comic relief type of character or something, you know. Uh, Nitara, who is the only vampire in the um, Mortal Kombat universe. Uh, they didn't really explore much with her, which I thought was very interesting. And I don't know if she'll be making an appearance in Mortal Kombat 11. It'd be interesting if she does. Um, I don't quite... No, I don't think she... No, she wasn't mentioned in the last video I did about this. But I went with Rona Mitra, who played Celine. No, not Celine. Who played um, Sonya in the um, Underworld um, prequel movie, Rise of the Lycans. If anyone could play a character like a vampire like her, I think Rona Mitra could do it. And Rona Mitra, I mean, um, Mitra had a pretty decent backstory. Her realm was conquered by Outworld and she's just trying to separate it from it. And of course she implore, employs um, uh, Cyrax to do her bidding, you know, to do it. But, you know, it is what it is. It kind of works out. So Rona Mitra for Nitara. 
Of course, Summer Glot as Frost. We already know, we are already well aware of that. So that's um that's 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 how that's gonna that's how that works. So again, Frost takes, plays a more prominent role in this phase because of her growing arrogance and powers as a cryomancing ninja. So it is what it is. So Moloch and Dramen, two of the Netherrealm only, um, that were actually in the original time well in the original timeline were chasing down um scorpion at the behest of uh, well at the behest of um quan chi moloch was supposed to be like that girl type character but he didn't really take off too well and Draman was just a skinless only who was just bashing people in the head with his clubbed hand you can cgi this you can cgi these two characters if you want you can mocap Draman. you can cgi i mean you can cgi moloch and you can get steve bloom to do the voices you know that's that, that that's pretty simple if you ask me that's just pretty pretty simple you know of course we're going to be introduced hold on one second yeah let's just go ahead and do that let's just go right ahead and do that we're going to get this out of the way right now and as you guys know in mortal kombat deadly alliance blaze was introduced blaze was introduced into the game and um I me mean, i look at blaze as a character that is i mean he's supposed to be a fail safe as we come to find out but he's supposed to have a whole bunch of martial arts abilities i went with tony job ja because tony job ja has a lot of martial arts abilities and to me it just makes sense that um blaze be a character that has many different fighting styles and knows exactly how you know to fight in all aspects so tony ja is just a character just the actor to do that so that's who i went with as far as on blaze is there anything else that i needed to add to this nope that's about it that is that and that concludes my fan cast redo for phase five of the mortal Kombat cinematic universe as i said we got phase six and then we have the final phase phase seven so look for those in the next few next couple of weeks as well um i hope you guys enjoyed my version of phase five i mean well yeah phase five and i hope you guys tune in for phase six and phase seven when they are released post your comments in the comment section below <clears throat> let me know what you thought about my version of phase five for the mortal Kombat cinematic universe if you enjoyed my video hit the thumbs up if you didn't hit the thumbs down share this video for all your friends and of course subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see i'm out peace